Well hello and welcome to the garden. It is the 15th of April. It's a beautiful sunny day and I thought it would be really nice to kind of go around the garden and show you what's there and the good things and the bad things and um, just celebrate the fact that spring is now here. This is the central path that sort of eventually takes you down to my studio and that's why I choose to put all of these flowers. It's, this is kind of a flowery, flowery border. Um, so there are some very poorly espaliered apple trees and then lots of planting. You can see that we have lots of tulips, which is kind of good. They are very beautiful tulips called Purissima. They come out kind of a yellowy cream and then fade to more of a whitish cream. They are pretty perennial. Um, I planted them four years ago and they have increased rather than decreased. But I'm going to show you why I'm going to have to take them all out. So look at this horrible, horrible thing. This here, this leaf, this is all tulip fire. Um, I had hoped that we wouldn't get tulip fire because I didn't grow tulips here for six or seven years, but <laughs> that's obviously not the case. Um, and all of the tulips are affected, this whole border. So as soon as these have stopped flowering, we're going to have to dig out all of those bulbs and then not grow tulips for another seven years. So I think I'll be planting more narcissi because narcissi seem to be very happy. All right, and this is a red currant bush. You can just see the fruit is beginning and then behind it is a wood plant. Now I won't be able to die from this wood because it's going to flower, but uh, the flowers are the most magnificent, magnificent things. I mean, seriously, you would grow them just for the flowers, not the dying. Um, so I will show you them when they come out. But the plant that I am dying with is here. This is all sweet Sicily, which is slightly aniseedy smell, and which is my favourite dye plant of this time of year. We come through here, Dixie sitting in the sun. This is the other half of that bed. You can see this has no tulips in it anyway, so I won't have to dig them up. But it does have rather nice narcissi all ready to flower. And these are all self sown forget me nots. And the idea is that all of the narcissi bloom through this kind of carpet of forget-me-nots. So you can see I have a great habit of starting at the end nearest the house and then having less and less, fewer and fewer plants while we come to the end until there's hardly anything at this. And this bed that is under the bald landscape fabric is a bed where we have really bad problems with creeping thistle and I think it was just going to destroy us fighting against that. So it's going to be a, a couple of years underneath that. And there's a bed that I've been hoeing this morning and over towards where there was meant to be asparagus and I suspect there isn't and also some rhubarb. My relationship with asparagus is really a great example of how stupid it is to try and grow things. Um, they grew elsewhere really well, but struggle where you are. So where my dad is, um, he used to grow asparagus. I used to think he grew it for my birthday, um, which is mid-May, but I mean, he just grew asparagus and it's really, really easy to grow it. His house itself seeds all over the place. Um, but here where it is wetter, 
and the soil is heavier, this is what happens. This is my asparagus plant, my single asparagus plant, which I tried to keep covered, and there is absolutely nothing there, I think. Um, I really should just give up. However, the rhubarb, I mean, just look at how amazing that rhubarb is. Rhubarb is one of my favourite things. You can create a mordant with it as well, which um, I think helps. But just look at that. You can't even see. Gorgeous, gorgeous. And then next to it, another thing that I really like, which is sorrel. Love sorrel omelettes. Um, or adding it to soups just for that kind of lemony bitter taste. And again, it's very, very happy here. Nicely perennial. This bed, although it doesn't look very interesting, is actually where I've sewn my first things. I don't normally sew things direct into the ground, but this is Larkspur Blue Cloud, which is a really nice kind of navy blue Larkspur. It's also it's very airy, so I have great hoops for being able to print with it. It really likes to be frozen and unfrozen it won't um like self sew here and it doesn't like being planted in november which is always the suggestion but if i plant it in march i tend to have quite good germination so here you can see just about this bit here that's them beginning to germinate there's another one um, so hopefully we'll get a decent crop. Okay. This I absolutely love. Um, this is chives here. Um, they are obviously very, very happy. But right in the middle, I don't know whether you can see it, here there is some snake's head fritillaries have self sown. Right, this bed at the front of the border is sort of like the newest growing space that we have. We had to take a box hedge out where you can see that um, soil there because the box had got box blight. So we took all of the box hedges out and put this bed in its place. And this is uh, the compost from the compost heaps and leaves from all of the hedges swept up and put on top of it you can see it's a little bit weedy but pretty good and i'm going to plant lots and lots of salad hopefully it will look really pretty right the way along there and the the net is just there to warm up that bit of soil because that's where i'm going to put the early salads and if we turn around here, this is kind of dining space. And also a place where I can have lots of pots of herbs. So there are pots of mint. There's honeysuckle and roses growing up there. There's lots of grasses, lots of sangrasoba. You can see the honesty there. Um, there were also a number of problems in the frost. So this pot, which was some agapanthus, has completely frosted, as has that one there. And you can see this poor bay tree is very, very unhappy with the frost. the hop is already beginning to send up its shoots and by midsummer it will be covering all of that frame. 
and there's the wisteria. So I've had a few questions about how big is the garden and how much help do I have in doing it. Now the garden is, the bit that I garden is around about an acre and it goes round the house so there are two little gardens at the front which I haven't shown you and there's this big kind of productive patch here. There is behind the hedge there is an orchard and a kind of a a flower border then there's a perennial meadow going down to my studio. Um, how much help do I have? Well um, I have a lady called Fiona who looks after uh, one morning a week the bit on the other side of this hedge. So the bit that goes from the car park down to my studio. Uh, so she makes sure that the grass is cut, that um, you know, that border doesn't get too overgrown and that the perennial meadow gets kind of like nettles taken out of it, and docks, that kind of thing. I also have a friend called Eileen who comes in some Wednesday mornings just because she likes getting her hands in the soil and being away from her own garden and spending time with my dogs and um, having a cup of tea. So Apart from that, it's just me. My husband does things like making decks, making raised beds, putting up the metal sweet pea um, things, but he's not interested in plants. So all of the propagating and the planting and the weeding and all of that kind of thing is mine. <laughs> I love it. I just love it. So from next week, I will be starting to plant things out in this part of the garden, which is the bit that's going to become a botanical dye garden. Um, I've got them waiting in the greenhouse, and I think by next week, with a bit of fleece, I'm going to be prepared to risk them out in the ground here. So I will film that and I'll share that here but in the meantime I would just love to know about your garden and why you garden and what joy it brings because here this is just where I love to be and you know I, I have very little stamina so I can garden for about an hour and then I have to go and do something that's less strenuous um, I'm always getting stuck because of things like this grass that I cannot physically tackle myself. Um, but I think that being in the garden and seeing things grow and getting my hands dirty is a big part of what enables me to live a really vibrant, happy life. What do you think, Dixie? <laughs>